Unsyndicated presents. Off the air with Sean the Legion. What is up? Glad you could join us wherever you may be. He is Mike. I am Sean. Uh, We are basically here tonight to talk about the Tigers. And uh, to Todd and Blake, uh, we need a a link to put out. For whatever reason, it's not coming out on the Twitter side. So uh, it's always nice to take care of a business like that. So just wanted to let uh, both the boys know and see if we could figure that out. But uh, Michael Bohenick, how are you? my friend good buddy it's been a while yeah right good to see you yeah. i'm great help me out here will you we we, yeah. we help me out here um yeah. we have to give hey eric what's up we we have to give the tigers credit for what has transpired here in july we have to give them credit for what has transpired in a week where I remember talking to you a week ago after the sweep of the reds and i'm sure that you'll remember this right um I remember talking to you and saying they're going to go two and five at most. Oh, yeah. They're going to go two and five, right? Right. Congratulations! That's awesome, fantastic, great, all of that stuff. Okay, but and this is where people are going to yell at me. You know as well as I do. It, it's such fool's gold. I'm sorry. Both things can be true. We can give credit where credit is due, and we can also sit back and say, "Don't put too much into this." Right. <laughs> I remember the conversation much differently. I remember telling you, we're all in. You're not all in. That's the problem. I've been all in from day one. You can go back and look. I was all in. Um, Look, you know, you and I are going back and forth saying, there's no way they're going to win this game today. And then they win the game on a freaking bunt. And the Dodgers throw the ball away. I mean, that's going to happen during a 162 game season. You're going to have some fluky stuff going on. Look, the, the fact of the matter is it's a team that is still three games under 500 and still seven games out of the last wild card. Yep. So you can tell me how much fun it's been and oh, the ballpark was packed to see the Dodgers and show hey and the whole deal. That's cool. They're still not good. All nope. right. You need to, I'm listening, you know, I'm driving home from the beach today and I'm listening to do a little bit of, uh, you know, other sports radio. And the guy on there is just blowing all the smoke in the world. Like, well, you can see the plan coming together and all this other stuff. It's like, we've seen this before over the last several years. Have we not? Where, they're hovering around 500. They're a couple games under 500. Yep. Oh, we're into July and we're a handful of games out of the wild card and all this stuff. Look, not only are you seven out of the wild card, there's a handful of teams that you have to leapfrog to even get there. And, and um, I think I heard they are, shit, what were they? 10, 10 and four in their last 14 or something. And they gained a game yeah. in the wild card standings. You gained yep. a game. Yep. So it's not about it's not about being three games under 500. It's not about getting to the the magic, you know, 85, 86 wins to try to get into the wild card. It's about the fact that you've dug your health, yourself such a huge goddamn hole this early and now you've got to try to dig yourself out while other teams are going to, you know, look at Houston. They're on fire. They have the best record in baseball over the last month. Are, are you better than the Houston Astros? No. No, you're not. And there's just certain teams and rosters that you can look at and be like, this is a cute little run that they're on right now. How long does it last? And honestly, the all-star break right now is the worst possible thing that could have happened to them. Because I would be shocked. I will be shocked if they come out of the break and continue on this little run that they got going on. I'd be absolutely amazed. And and so I'm so glad that you brought that up because the one team that I was going to bring up was the Minnesota Twins. And do I think mm-hmm. the Minnesota Twins are good? Absolutely not. I, I don't. Okay. But this division can still be theirs. And after their crappy start for them to pick up baseball, uh, so pick up some baseball games. Look, they're, they're just four and a half back of Cleveland right, right now. And, and, 
they're sitting there in a wild card spot right now. That's the right. difference between a legitimate team and yeah. where the Tigers are at. And and I, uh, honest to God, Mike, <clears throat> I, you and I have had this conversation so many times. And I remember talking to the late Jamie Samuelson about this on on uh, SportsWorks on Fox Two a few years back. One of my pet peeves in sports today is that line of thinking that you were just talking about. Well, the Tigers are only X out, okay? So am I going to put my faith, am I going to put my faith in a number as opposed yeah. to what my eyes are seeing? Like, right. like which one is it? A 47 and 50 baseball team yeah. that I, like Mike, it, it, it really goes to show you like how bad it's been. This is their best record at the all-star break since I think I said 2016. Yeah. Like, yeah. Are you kidding me? 40, 50 is their best mark. I mean, that's right. the high water mark. That's where we're at right now with this franchise. And you probably have 10 franchises right now, including the defending world champions that are tearing the freaking hair out with a record like this. I think yep. the Tigers have a half game better than the Rangers right now or something like that. It's very close. Yep. You won the world series. Like you're not, you're not happy about what's going on at all. And if you're a Rangers fan, you're probably like, screw it. The season's over. We got no shot. We're seven and a half out of a wild card. The run is over. We're going to have to sell. And, and that's it. And that's the funny thing. It's like, we talk about this all the time too, where there's this automatic progression where teams, and you and I talked about this, I think on the preseason show, they have to get better. Oh, well, they're young. Okay. So they weren't good last year. Okay. Well, they're going to be better. Why? Why? Explain to me why. And that's the thing coming out of the break. Are they going to play better ball in the second half after the all-star break? Why? Give me the reason. And no, you can't, I'm sorry. I Do I see Colt Keith hitting 330 with a 1000 OPS in August? No, I don't. He's done that over the last month, which is absolutely insane. And thank God for him because you got him locked up for a long time and you and I were sitting here saying, "Uh oh, this might be a problem." And now the guys bury freaking bonds out of it's nowhere, which is great. It is. It's great. I'm happy to see it. Yeah, no but, no jogging on that. No, 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 no. But then you look at the rest of the roster and you've got some pieces here that, you know, I mean, are you are you getting who is anybody going to want Mark Canna at the break right. at the deadline? I don't know. Maybe as like a veteran calming presence. I don't know. Is anybody going to want Matt Verling? What are you getting for him? So leave it to this goddamn franchise. Leave it to them to be two weeks ago, obvious sellers at the deadline. Like we're, we're, we're selling Flaherty. We're selling Canna. We're selling Verling. We're selling Chafin. We're going to listen on Scooble. We're going to yeah. listen. You would have, you would have had to listen. Now you're sitting here once again in baseball. What? It starts with the letter P purgatory. Exactly. It, it you're is. here again. Yep. And it's like, no, this is the worst. It's, like oh, okay we're winning games it's fun for the future this is going to be like scott harris's crucible like he is going to go through a burner over the next two weeks it's going to be very interesting to see where his head is at what the what the front office or, or ownership is dictating toward him are we buying are we selling are we doing that weird mixture where we're going to sell, but stay in the race. Like some fantasy baseball owners I've known in the past, you know, where they sell their entire roster and win the whole thing. Anyway. <laughs> Things like that. You know, it's just, you're in this weird position now where you're neither hot nor cold and you're lukewarm. So I shall spit you out of my mouth. And it's, it's, I, I think, uh, unfortunately this franchise is at such a point, Mike, where, I get it. People want something to look forward to. I of do. I, I totally get So I got a call from my kid today. You know, he's out in LA and, and like he said to me, he, he's like, he was like, dad, is this legit? And, and I said, uh -oh. no, it's not. I, I said, I'm sorry. Enjoy it while it lasts. Uh, all of that stuff. Okay. But you grew up in an era, hmm. you know, I've said this before. My son is 24 to yeah. him. There was a period of time where when the calendar hit October 
It yep, meant yep. what days are we going to Tiger playoff games? Yep, yep. And yep. I said, it's not that. This is yep. not a team that we're talking about being in, in the playoffs. So yeah, um, yeah. it's funny you mentioned Flaherty. I want to get your thoughts on that. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more about you've got to have the conversation. Man, I, I don't care who the player is on your team, okay? You always pick up the phone. Oh, when yeah. I Right. Somebody say, oh, no, I, I wouldn't even no, <clears throat> always listen. Always listen. I don't unless, think you're due diligence unless it, not listening. Uh, unless it's Tampa calling Al Avila. Then you hang up the goddamn then phone. You, hang up. you throw it against a wall. Yeah, then uh, nobody look, answers the phone. Jason, maybe the credit goes to Bohenic for the recent success after the last time he was on. Oh, oh yeah. Ooh, that's yeah. got to be it. That's, watch out. Watch out. I'm going to the parade. <laughs> Eric said. Got to have uh, you on every day now. Eric, the big Yankee fan, said the Yanks stayed right where they were, one game behind. Uh, Orioles uh, salvaged one today. That's going to be a fun race down the side. Yeah. Uh, Tim said scoring seventh from the bottom in the AL runs against six. How can we feel good about that? Bam. I mean, Bam. there you go. And It's a cute little run. Give them right. their flowers, but that's all it is. Yeah. Yeah. And, and is it sustainable to – get to again that 85 86 87 win mark and the answer to me is no no nope. i mean i think i saw they play cleveland like nine times in the next like 25 games after the break or something like that you're gonna know at that point i mean it's and again it's is it gonna be too late after the deadline to know to know know what you are like it's just so hard for me to get into a headspace where Scott Harris would even consider being a buyer because what do you have to offer? What do you have to sell? Really? I mean, you've got some spare parts here or there that can net you a, you know, Hispanic single a second baseman that's hitting 240. But aside from that, what do you got? Right? Like, I don't know. I don't know where you are as an organization. Is this just a, uh, well, we're not selling, we're not buying. We're just going to stand pat and continue to develop, you know, down in the minors. Flaherty is such an interesting case at this point, because you know he wants a long-term deal, and you know he's pitched his ass off to get it. And again, leave it to this freaking organization to (laughs) sign the guy on a one-year deal as a safety net and just say, hey, man, we know you've been injured. We're going to work with you. You know, and and props to Chris Fetter. I mean, the guy clearly knows what he's doing. I mean, good pitching coach. Um, But – what do you do with the guy? He's not, he's not locked up any further than this year. Do you let him walk at the end of the year and collect your compensatory draft pick? That might be the only thing you can do because if you sell at the deadline with Flaherty, you are waving the white flag. You are because that rotation without him. Oh, and, and, and by the way, Kenta is back, baby. I don't know if you saw him today out of the pen. Oh, he did oh. get him his happy spot. He, he's every- the new... Ricky the Wild Thing Vaughn, dude. That's in your face. I want to talk about Flirty in just a second, but first, uh, if we can, let's talk about our friends at All About Catering LLC. (laughs) All About Catering LLC is a full-service caterer. Graduations, wedding, bridal showers, heck, a fantasy draft party, a a fantasy draft sell party, corporate events, everything you need catering for from 25 to 4,000 people. All About Catering will take care of you. Customer service and satisfaction is their number one goal. So don't sweat your next big event. Just go to allaboutcateringllc.com today to see their menus and all their five-star reviews. Give them a call, 586-731-1398. That's 586-731-1398 to get your event started. As Andrew Williams said, trade Flaherty. Extend Scooble. Um, I've heard so many people talk about, well, now we can't trade Flaherty. I say you still trade Flaherty and you don't even think twice about it. I know nobody wants to hear it. Okay. And, and guys, I I know people are going to say you guys are just being haters. It's not like this team's the hottest team in baseball or anything like that. I'm being very sincere when I say this. Okay. And I know you don't want to hear it. Why on earth would he want to sign here? Yeah. Right yeah. now. Yeah. This, this guy, like he he has worked himself up to this point where he's ready to get. I mean, don't get me wrong, the one year deal was a great mm-hmm. deal. Okay. Yeah. But he's 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 looking at long term, okay? And hopefully with a competitor, okay. Why would he want to be here right now? 
Like, I, I don't want to take that chance. Let's get whatever we can for him. This yep. is where I have no problem saying, okay, give us your your cute little prospects. We'll pinch their cheeks and hope that one of them turns into Tarek Skubal or Colt Keith or Riley Green. That That's yeah. where I have no problem doing it, Mike. It's You're always going to be the bad guy in this conversation when it comes to Skubal because his value will never be higher than mm-hmm. it is right now it just won't be the guy I, I don't know if they announced it yet the guy might start the freaking all-star game yeah. i mean he's been that good but he does have two surgeries in his past and he is a scott boris client if you pay a starting pitcher long term you better have the pieces around him to win basically immediately because if you haven't noticed When you're locking these guys up long-term, it is a freaking disaster zone out there. DeGrom, Strasburg, Max Scherzer, Justin Verlander. These are just small examples of guys that were getting paid huge bank over the last couple of years, and their combined war is like zero or something like that if I looked. Um, I'm not paying the guy. And I know that's not a popular thing to say. You got Jackson Job down there. He's supposedly coming up. He's pitching well. You're going to have to do things a little bit differently than the big market clubs are doing. You're going to have to do it like Cleveland is doing it. You're going to have to do it like Tampa has in the past, because I don't anticipate this ever being a top 10 payroll franchise literally ever again until Chris is gone. I, yep. I don't see that happening. And the only way that the only way to you know contend by paying and extending starting pitching like that is to enter the top 10 in payroll. And and I don't see it. I think it's too big of a risk. Um, I think you have had, you've been obviously burned by big contracts within the very recent history. I don't think it's a good idea. I would listen to the strongest offer I could get before July 31st. And I would, it's going to suck, especially listen, if they come out of the gate after the break and they go in the tank, let's say they lose, you know, five of their first six or something like that. Obviously, it's a more, much more palpable deal to make, but it's again, you're in this purgatory again. I can't you believe it. You're not bad enough to, to where it's an automatic sell everything, sell what you can get. We need help, but it's not, we can buy something either because you're not giving up Max Clark, you're not giving up Job, you're not giving up these valuable, you know, limited, as we know, pieces that you have down on the farm because you don't have a ton. Let's be honest. You've got, they're in that weird like college football recruiting boat where they've got, three or four quote five stars and then the rest are two stars right so that's why their baseball america ranking is going to be high because they've got a couple studs down there but that doesn't make a team you need more than that you need organizational depth and they're still not there with that so it's gonna i'm very intrigued this this will probably be the most interesting tigers trade deadline that we've seen in god how many years six seven years I just don't think we can we can endure another Eduardo um, debacle no. like, like no. almost a year ago. You know, th- this is a situation, and I know people don't want to say it, and I've said it on th- this show. You have to listen about Scoobal, okay? Yep. And and my big hang-up, and you know this, is after all these years, we know all the names. I, I could sit here and waste all of our time the next 30 seconds with all these can't-miss cute little prospects that, that are, were being bantied about as being the next catcher of the future. This is a 10-year second baseman. This is our third baseman. This is our – I mean, every one of those names. You finally get – I mean, we're talking a decade, okay? You finally get a guy that you can look at and go, that's legitimate. Nobody can argue Tarek Skubal. Nobody can. We can have varying degrees about Riley Green. I think he's just a good player. Honestly, I think that Riley Green's just a good player. That's all he is. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? No, no. He's not MVP type, but he's a very good player. There is nobody that can deny, like, that Tarek Skubal right now might be one of the best pitchers. Forget about the American League in all of baseball. Yeah, you finally get that piece, and we're in this position. I know, I know. You, you this is again. It's we keep saying, keep going back to it. Yeah, it's it's we keep going back to it. Only this freaking franchise, only this franchise. You've been dying for an ace for how many years now? Since Verlander, you've been dying for one, 
now you have one and you have to listen to phone calls on them. You have to, you have no option. And now I, I will challenge you a little bit on the cute little prospect names and stuff. Those prospects names, who did we hear those names from? Who well, the, talking the, about that? the organization and a lot of media daily. Thank you. Okay. By, by great. Day. Great. No about so it. this is bullshit coming from within the house, right? The, the caller is in the house. There's okay. No doubt about that. That's the Tigers. I think it's a completely different conversation when you're talking about getting the Baltimore Orioles on the phone, who obviously know what the F they're doing when it comes to development and talking to them about making a deal. Because that's a different ball game. You're, you're, you, you have your guy in school bowl. They've got four or five freaking kids that they're log jammed. They have nowhere to put them. That's a that's going to be an interesting candidate to have a conversation with and say we we do kind of need a shortstop around here. Uh, it would be nice to have a good reason to you know let Javi you know let the door hit him on the ass on the way out. That would be an intriguing conversation to have about Jackson Holiday plus one plus one for Scoobal. Would they do it? I don't know, but it's a conversation that you've got to have. Well, that puts to me that that when you're talking about that Yankees Orioles battle, if he ends up in Baltimore, I mean it's advantage Baltimore at that point in time. I mean, yeah, yeah. And this is a typical cat. <clears throat> Team. Let's let's be honest. I mean, what has right. been his Achilles heel for the yeah. past 20 years? He doesn't have a staff. How many times have we had this conversation? It's it's like he doesn't put that premium on the staff. And how many times have we seen it? Think back just to the Tigers versus the Yankees yeah. series. It was the Tigers pitching rolling over the Yankees. Every yeah. time it was the Tigers pitching roll. Now, I will say this: it, the the thing, it wasn't just the in-house stuff. It, it, part of the reason that the fans got so crazy is because Baseball America and yeah, all these right. ranking services would come out and say, the Tigers have the number three farm and the yeah. Tigers have the number and, and all of that stuff. Mike, for me, it's PTSD. It really is. Or P I, P I, I mean, post-traumatic stress disorder. I said it right yeah. the first time. It, it All those names and guys like you and I were screaming at people saying, just do a little homework. Just a little. I'm yep. not asking for a lot. Right. Google right. is your friend. Look up what he's doing in Erie. Look yep. up what this guy's doing in Toledo. These guys aren't lighting it up. Now you're just right. going word of mouth with Al Avila and hashtag uh, Detroit Roots and all that crap. Yeah. The Orioles do have a plethora of, of talent. There's no doubt about that. For me, I would want a known. If you if you're if you're getting rid of a guy like Scooble, okay, and and again, maybe it's Verlander's in my head, JD Martinez is in my head. I don't just give me something of a known, right? And and Holiday is a guy that that I don't think he categorizes as a coochie coochie coo. He's been on the ball club. Everybody knows his promise, et cetera, et cetera. I'm talking about those guys that we saw in the in the Martinez deal, that we saw in the JV deal, that, oh, wait, this kid has all the tools. It, listen, you got to be patient with him. Mm -hmm. Give him a couple years or anything like that. I want those guys that can jump in yesterday. No, I'm yeah. Sure absolutely. If we're going to have that conversation, then that's what it's yeah. going to have to be. No, you're, you're going to need MLB-ready talent to go, and hopefully it's vast majority of it is offense because, as we saw, seventh to last in baseball and run scored. This circumstance is so much different than the fire sale of the past that we've seen here uh, in right. 15 and 17. There's no edict coming down from the front office saying, we've got to get rid of payroll. We need to shed payroll. Scoobles making nothing. It's, again... It, not only do you have a gem, but you're going to have multiple teams contacting you because now you've got an arms race where you've got Baltimore, you've got New York, you've got Houston, you've got all, all these teams like that are looking at Scooble and being like, man, it would be really nice to have a piece like that for another two and a half years under team control, by the way. Yeah. Okay. So that's even more value built in. And, you know, I just... I am not a fan of paying these starting pitchers long term, especially guys that throw 99, 100 miles an hour. It's a matter of time before that arm just blows up. I uh, want to get to a lot of your comments as well. Uh, first, uh, give us a second. I do want to talk about our friends at the Wealth Advantage Group, uh, the Hanson Brothers. And if you are ready to take charge of your financial future, look no further 
than the Wealth Advantage Group, located in historic downtown Northville, owned by those two guys. Hey, listen, guys, they're helping me and my family. They're helping a lot of people out there. They can help you. Why? They have over 20 years of industry experience. They understand that your financial goals are as unique as you are. And that's why they offer personalized expert guidance to help you navigate the complexities of financial planning. Now, whether you're saving for retirement, you're getting ready to sell your company, already in retirement, they can help guide you through every step of your financial journey. They work with clients throughout all stages of life and have clients in over 20 states. The investment world is a complex one. So if you're ready to start taking your finances more seriously, it might be time to work with an expert. Reach out to the Wealth Advantage Group at 248-773-8574 or visit their website at www.thewealthadv. Dot com. Give those guys a call. I'm I'm telling you, they've done it for us. They'll do it for you as well. Some comments, Mike, I, I want to get to a lot of people have been uh, commenting on here. Tim said, I doubt Chris will extend Scooble. They said, will you be talking about Brandon Inge soon? I have to get the lawn mode. I, I still just can't. I just <laughs> Thank you, Al, for the purgatory hell. Uh, on the 84th yeah, yeah. screen, been Daryl Evans. Uh, Jason said, Al only drafted and traded for like 30 middle infielders. The guy just had an eye for talent that day. <laughs> was that, that was the best. Jason, that was, that was my favorite line with straight faces until about a month left in his tenure. Okay. You had people at every turn talking about his eye for talent. And I'm sorry. And if you don't believe me, you could look it up on YouTube. Five years ago, me and this guy on my back porch during a lightning storm were, were, were pleading with people saying, you, you guys, there's nothing there. There's no. literally, there's nothing there. Please yep. go look. This isn't just me saying it. Google is your friend. All those things that we talked about, Mike, like, sadly, it came to fruition that that was smoke and mirrors and simply put kicking a can down the road. It was yeah. it was amazing to me. It was God bless America that that guy was able to pull the wool over everybody's eyes as long as he did. It's it's absolutely terrifying for you to say that because a lot of those guys that we talked about are still here. Oh, absolutely. Jake Rogers is still here. That guy is still catching two out of every. Can someone help me? Can someone help me understand why he's still here? Okay, the guy can't hit for shit. He all right, he, he can't get on base. What are we looking at here? Uh, is Dylan Dingler thirty five years old yet? Look, I, I need to know. So Bo you're going to have to bear with me first. How, how many Ding times is Bo Burrows on the Burrows. Top prospects list? Dylan, not, Dingler, Dylan Dingler is twenty five years old. What are we waiting for? Yeah. Can he play or not? Yeah. And this is the part that I really struggle with with this organization sometimes because it does seem to me the game keeps getting younger and younger, except here. This is the only place where things don't get younger and younger, and they leave these kids down there to die until they're 25. Dingler this year. Okay, are you ready for this? 298, 363, 506, 870 OPS. What are we waiting for? Is he a butcher behind the plate? What is he a future DH? Maybe Can he, he not play the position. Maybe he doesn't call it 70. Career. This team wins five, six more games with him behind the plate and in the lineup than Jake Rogers. Yeah. Get him up here. Let's see what he can do. No, we're going to leave him in Toledo until he's 29. When is the right time? And it's not like, I'm not saying Dylan Dingler is the next, you know, Joe Maurer or something. No. I'm not saying that. It's about but what I am saying what I am saying is I've seen enough of Jake freaking Rogers and his stupid mustache. Get out of here. You were a top prospect, shit, seven, eight years ago in the yep. Verlander trade? Yep. Why are you still here? Go yeah. away. Enough. We have we have talked about this many times. I, I haven't even told you this yet. Um, so you and I have talked about this. I think we've done it on the show. And if we haven't, uh, we will hear. This town is really weird in the regard that they take an average player for whatever reason. Maybe it's a guy they saw and they just put him on a pedestal that that he doesn't deserve to be on. And I was literally having this conversation with somebody on a show I was doing, Mike, and I, I'm not going to mention any names out of respect for this guy. I like the guy. 
but I, I was I was doing the whole Akil Badu thing. And and I, I said, listen, and, and my buddy Chris Butzloff, the Tigers P announcer, like I, I love Chris, but part of it is the way that Chris says names. Great guy, but people Badu and, and, and like it's become so he's become like this cult hero. He's awful. He's been awful. <laughs> and, and it was funny because I, I was talking about this, and the guy said, well, that's true, but you have to admit he kind of had a magical first year. And, and I said, well, no, he really didn't. I, I said, people made a big deal because you got something out of a Rule 5. Yeah, but right, let, right. come on, it's going a little too far to say a magical little year. But this is where we are as a fan base. And, and again, I mean, no disrespect to this guy, but this is where we are as a fan base. His response to me was, well, he did have a 330 OPS. That's not an opinion. It's fact. And I just looked at him and I said, so you are saying we should build a brazen like idol to a guy that has an OPS that is about league average. O- OPS, the, the, the average, I, I believe, is 325, okay, in, yeah, in, in major. Right. This is a guy who had a 330. Yeah. Yeah, he, yeah, excuse me. Oh, thanks. Sorry. O- OBP. My apologies. Um, yeah, this I didn't want somebody to come out and be like, you're an idiot. It's OBP, not OPM. You know, I'll handle that. For not you. that we've ever, yeah, not that we've ever done that before. <laughs> but no, yeah. all, all jokes aside, o- OBP, okay? We're supposed to worship a guy that has a 330 OBP. And, and, and like I said, dude, like it's, it's, it's barely above average. And this mm-hmm. is a guy that simply put, can't play in the field. And no. that's not an opinion. That's a fact as well. And if you don't believe me, just kind of take a look at how watch. this team has utilized him yeah, in the past watch, couple watch. of years as well. All you have to yeah, do is yeah. watch, you know? Well, we've seen enough We've seen enough cult heroes in this town where we really – and even when they were good, okay? Right? Even when the team was good, we still had to deal with the Don goddamn Kellys and the Brandon Inges and the Ryan Rayburns. And it's just a weird part of this <laughs> – it's <laughs> Mikey Matuk. Oh, okay. It's a weird part of this blue collar town where, you know, they see these scrappy white kids and they're immediately like, it, it's there's this endearment. And the, it was the same thing with the wings, right? With the grind line. Like people would literally watch Sergei Fedorov and try to find holes in his game to be critical of the guy in this town. You went through it. You, you listened to those stupid calls to talk radio. But, well, you know, he's a dog. He doesn't hustle enough. He doesn't. It's like, guys, so guys like a top five talent in the world. Can you please shut up? Like the guy's amazing. Can you please appreciate him while he's here? And that's what I always struggled with during the golden, golden era for the Tigers. It's like, Wait a minute! You, you went out and spent money on a Brandon Inns jersey when Miguel Cabrera plays here. You, Just you took your money and you went and spent money on Ryan Rayburn or Don Kelly or Gerald Laird. You have literal Hall of Fame players. You're watching. Hall, you're never going to see these guys again. Like there's not going to be another Miguel Cabrera. And you went out and spent your hard-earned money from you know Ford's the Ford's plant or whatever. And you made for a Brandon Inge authentic. You Jake to... Rogers, Jake Rogers OPS is 597. Oh my gosh. It's 597. He has six home runs. Be he, has six, he has 16 RBIs. He has 16 RBIs. Get Be rid scared. of him. His career war, his career war is 1.3. It's Go incredible. away. Incredible. I, 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 you know, and, and, and I think a lot of times he, he's a great guy. He seems like a very amicable guy. He has fun with the media. He goes and does oh, oh, oh. downtown and stuff. And, and I, that's fantastic. And this goes back to, I, I remember a very prominent columnist in town. I think you know who he is. I won't say his name out of respect, but we had a big argument about a guy by the name of John Joseph Harrington. And he he said to me, you should back off him on him a little bit. And I said, I haven't done any personally. And no, no, I'm not saying that you have. Maybe maybe we shouldn't be so quick to run a good guy out of town. And Mike, I said to him, I said, hey, dude, Mother Teresa is one of the greatest humans that ever lived. I don't want her as my gosh damn quarterback. No, I don't want her taking a seven-step drop. Against he can't play. Julius I, Peppers. I don't care how nice he is. He can't f- freaking play and, and it's really <laughs> weird how we do that in this yep. town it just yep. uh people tony, get pot committed yeah tony said rogers versus the yankees was magical uh was that the same day michigan put a spanking on sparty rogers was the friday yes. night and then yeah. bonderman was the saturday afternoon yep. 
And that was the game that I was at where I will tell anybody who will listen. I think that was more fun than anything else. Even even the Maglio home run and everybody knows that landed right behind me. That, That spontaneous party on that Saturday afternoon, because Guys like you and I stopped paying attention to that football game that that afternoon. Oh, yeah, 100%. And watching all the Yankee fans file out of Comerica Park in the fifth inning when it was 8 nothing was one of the most wonderful moments of my life. And you're just going, is this real? Because this was, team yeah. has been so bad for so long. And yep. if you're like, gosh, just a week beforehand, we were all devastated. I was in the park. And- oh, yeah. Blew that game against the Royals and blew the division yeah. against uh, obviously the Twins. Oh yeah, gosh. yeah. I was there. I was there for that Friday night, and it was just, you know, I was at a game a couple weeks he ago with my buddy and and his son, and he's uh, I think he's twenty, mm-hmm. and it, you know, I I kind of caught us mid conversation talking to this young buck about the good old days, mm-hmm. and oh man. I went and saw Kenny's start against Oakland too when it was snowing and they had to move the game up because it was going to be too cold at night and they couldn't hit. And then I stopped myself. I'm like, God damn it. Like what, what has become of me? I'm that guy. I'm the guy telling these young kids like, it'll never be like that again, man. It was such a great time. We had so much fun and oh, it was one. And it's not, it's never going to be like that again. And nope. that's the sad part because we still didn't get one. We still never got one. We Dude, had all the fun in the world out of nowhere in 06, and we never got one. I always use guys like you, mm-hmm. and, and I'll include Todd in this conversation as well, okay? We talk so much about the young kids. I talk so much about my son. My son is 24. He, yeah. he was blessed to see 06, 11, 12, 13, 14, but he is so gosh damn sick and tired of hearing about 1984 okay and then you think about guys like you and todd who were alive but have absolutely no no memory of that this has been your entire lifetime is of 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 hearing about that team and i told you it reminds me of what happened i knew everything about the 68 tigers i wasn't born I was so gosh damn tired of hearing about the 68 Tigers that yeah. by the time 84 happened, I'm I'm firing this up going, okay, I got my 68. Cool. Yeah. And and it's been 40 years, man. 40 years. It's, and it's going to be longer. And I, I just, I don't see it happening within the next five, but who knows, maybe something happened. You know, real quick, yeah. something that I, I do think is kind of flying under the radar with this team right now. Um. You know, oh, the great comeback wins. That's all fantastic. This bullpen sucks. <laughs> okay. I'm not kidding. This bullpen <laughs> is ass. All right. The starting pitching has been really good. And early in the season, both the starters and the bullpen were good together and they just couldn't score runs. The bullpen's garbage. Jason Foley has been complete dog shit for I about a month and a half. No idea. Andrew what Chafin is a lefty specialist that can't get lefties out. He's got a 1.5 width. All right, so th- again, this is where I'll pull the rug out from anybody that wants to be on cloud nine about this little streak here. Dig a little bit deeper and look at how they're winning games. Dig a little bit into the details and and see if this is sustainable or not, because it's not. Who is your best arm in the bullpen right now? I don't know. Tyler Holton? I, I, I know. Kenta. Kenta! That's Kent. right. Kenta is here to save yeah. the pen. This is That's the why Scott Harris signed him. He knew. Yeah, he he knew. knew this was coming. He we knew. don't need you to start. Come July, you're going to that pen. And you're going to save us. Blake said Jake Rogers is the most hashtag Detroit Roots guy out there. He, <laughs> he like is. That, he is. That, he that, looks that, like that. a guy that was playing on the 84 team. He. That's what it is. They They portray this image of guys that they grew up watching. Oh, he looks like Lance Parrish back there. Yeah, and he about a, hits about a half as well as Lance Parrish did. Uh, Jason, uh, Don Kelly time. If no Brandon Inch talk, I no. need another name that wants me to live, laugh, toast, or bath. Uh, but Macy Perez. Oh, boy. Do, do you remember, like, like let's be – Leland had a really, really strange thing with some of those guys. And I know your yes. theory. I'm going to let you explain your theory again. Yeah. But the Nafi Perez thing was really – because say what you will, occasionally Ryan Rayburn had the big hit, okay? 
I know he wasn't good. I get it. All of that stuff, okay? Occasionally, there were – Nafi Perez – legitimately could not hit now no, he no. did save justin verlander's no hitter let's get you Correct. know tip of the cat that's not a reason for a guy to be on a 25 man roster but but mike jim leland adored guys like that and constantly gave them opportunity and that's why i hate jim leland i i, I just i could never get past that type of shit because everybody knew leland was a literally one of the best clubhouse managers to ever manage in baseball. He just was, he challenged Barry Bonds to his face. Like he, he would get weird personalities to come together and coexist. There never seemed to be a ton of, you know, uprisings in the, in the clubhouse and within the roster and fights among players or whatever. You never, you didn't get a much of that, but what you did get is this bullshit where Jim would see himself in a lot of these young, scrappy up-and-comers like we just talked about, how these Detroit fans love them all. He would see himself because he never made it. He never made it. He came from where? Uh, I forget. Ohio. Uh, uh, am I wrong? Just, yeah, just over the border next to Toledo. Damn, and it's, I can't, it's, it's not Youngstown, is it? No, it's right next to Toledo. It's right yeah. next to Toledo. And I, regardless. Shane, regardless. Yeah, you know. I, I, I don't know. Middle class or, or, you know, lower middle class, working class family never made it to the bigs. So he's going to see himself in a lot of these guys. Remember, I, I'll never forget. They acquired uh, Wilson Bedemeet at the deadline one year to play third base. And I was like, oh, it's over. Inge is gone forever. We're never going to have to see him again. And he fucking platooned him. He fucking platooned him at third. I, listen, I, I, honest to God, I don't know if you saw, I brought that up the other day. I kid you not, we were talking about this. And and this is a guy that, Wilson Bedemy, there was nothing special about that guy, okay? But no. he came in, he came in, and he, he hit about 300. He wasn't going to walk a lot. There was nothing special about this guy. And they brought Brandon Inge back late in the year. Yep. And Jack and I were at the game, and I know I told you this. And when Inge came out, he was a defensive replacement, I think, in the seventh inning. People gave him a standing ovation. And my kid and I were like looking around going, is, is somebody it's bizarro land? Are, are there like, like hidden cameras and they're just, they're playing a gag on us. It was, it was so stinking weird. Perrysburg, by the way, Perrysburg. Perrysburg. It was right on the tip of my tongue. I should have known that. Listen to these guys. What an idiot. You threw it to Cleet Thomas. Bobby. <laughs> oh, Cleet. I liked Cleet for a minute. Bubba, Bubba Trammell. Uh, no, it, come on. Crappy players. We had that that Phil Garner stuff. Kamara Barty. Ooh. I, you know, it Former was, first base coach, I think. Yeah. Jeez, so oh, Pete, it was it was unbelievable. So now you know what this is. This is exactly what we're talking about. This is where we are at right now. And, and um, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> You're 47 and 50 and you had yep. a really good week, man. Like, like yep. seriously, but you yeah. seriously have to entertain getting rid of two of your most prominent pieces. This is yep. where we're at right now, man. And, and the reason, and the reason, again, we can go back to this and we've talked about it a million times. The reason you have to keep going back to this well of, oh, well, we might have to sell. We're not very good. We're not a 500 ball club is because you whiffed on two goddamn number one overall draft picks. And one of them is in Toledo with a 750 OPS. Yep. Yep. It's, I, honestly, I, I, I hate to say this and I hate to bury the kid. He's dead and gone. Torkelson's done. I, he will he will hook up with another ball club eventually and he'll get another look in the bigs. I, I am willing to say right now his career in Detroit is over. It's July of 2024. I am I am willing to say right now on this date, and you can remember this conversation at 8 45 ish PM, Spencer Torkelson's career in Detroit is over. It's over. I, They're gonna I, go out and get another first baseman in the offseason. He's done. I want to believe that this really is as simple as what Kirk Gibson talked about. And these are just confidence issues. I want Jesus, to believe don't that. Don't get me. Don't, don't, I, I, don't listen, do that. Oh, listen, only because I watched that kid light it up the last month and a half, half last year. And, and I really want to believe that, that it's a confidence issue, but the realist in me tells me it's just not there. 
No, it, it just, I, I just, it, it's just not there. It isn't. If, and, and, and if you're that. getting sent down to Toledo as a former number one overall pick, and that doesn't light the biggest fire under your ass that you've ever felt in your entire life, then it's not coming. All right. I mean, the, the guy, oh, he got off to a hot start in Toledo. He's got like a 650 OPS since then. He's not hitting. Yeah, And I don't think he's going to. I just don't see a way around it. And when you blow two number one overall draft picks, you can have all the Tarek Skubles in the world that you want. But that foundation that you had a plan for is gone. And you're walking around on paper mache and and, stealing a couple wins here or there. But it is not a long-term solution when you suck that badly at drafting and developing. Casey Mize is a number four on this team, a number five on a on a good team, he's a number that, one overall freaking pick. It's insane. It's it's, it's, it's insane. Just sad. It is. Um. Yeah. A couple of comments. Yeah. The the Twitter stream is down right now. So if you usually watch us on Twitter, we apologize. You can go on YouTube. You can go on Facebook. So I apologize for that. Andrew, 2012, 2013, the Tigers were the best team in baseball. Ruined by the bullpen. I will say until the day I die of all those teams, 06, 11, 12, 13, 14, uh, 2013 is the team. And, and I will, I will, there will be a hole in my heart forever unless the Tigers go win a World Series. That was the year. Um, Mike, you and I have talked about this a hundred times. The whole idea that that series was over after Poppy's home run drives me no. out of my mind. No, There were so many things that happened, even up to game six, that could have flipped the script. Um, I thought that was the easy thing to just blame it on, on Big Poppy's home run. That's a, a, a greater discussion we can save for another day. But that 2013 team... Um, I often say in 2014, you knew it was over. Like you and I were both at that Orioles game and you you knew that moment on that Sunday afternoon, that dreary Sunday afternoon, it was over. The reality was it was probably over the second that series ended in 2013. Whether we yeah. wanted oh, yeah. to it or not, it probably was. Yeah, over. they were running on fumes after that in, in 14. But I'll challenge that. I, I don't. I think that's a weak narrative in this town about the, the 2012 and 2013 bullpen. I disagree completely. 2013 bullpen was really fucking good. They were really good. Go look at Drew Smiley. Look at Joaquin Benoit for well, that- the entire year. They were excellent. Okay. So don't, you know, we can go back to this game a million times. If you want to go back to game two in Fenway, that's a Jim Leland problem. Okay. Go back and look, go back and watch what happened. Drew Smiley walked one guy. And here comes old Smokey to yank him. You're up by four. What side of the plate does David Ortiz bat from? Yeah. Oh, the left side. Let's go get two righties. All right. Yeah. Let's go get two righties and watch this lineup turn over and watch him hit a tank. So that's a Jim Leland problem. And I'll go back to that every day. Not to mention game six, you got Jose Iglesias vomiting on himself on the easiest double play ball in history when the only reason the guy's in there is for his glove. Nobody in this town talks about that. Never. You will not find one Never. person in this town except for me that will constantly bring up sure. this sure-handed shortstop making the biggest error you'll ever see in the biggest moment of all time because people in this town had already checked out. They knew it was coming. If you win game six, oh, man, I, I – Who knows what happens, but you were winning the game. They were winning the game when he made that error. And that's why I say literally the opportunities between that home run and into game six, the Napoli home run, you know, Verlander pitches a gem and Napoli. I mean, literally one bad pitch. And that was the difference in that game. There were so many things in that series after after the poppy home run that that it, it drives me out of my mind people forget how good Joaquin Benoit was do you remember he i mean he openly told everybody i don't want to be the closer and out of yep. necessity they kind of had to go to him and it was yep. uh oh it was just uh it, it it broke my heart and somebody said did you hear Iglesias sing however that was oh, wonderful that was- get so great. That's fantastic. Yeah, good for him. That's, that's said, really something else. The Legion, you sound like Mulder. You want to believe. I, I do want to believe. No, I, all jokes aside, <laughs> who wants to give up? I mean, you are talking about number one draft choices, okay? You yeah. are. It, could you imagine if the Tigers go over with their number one picks? Like, I want you to think about that. Over. How? What? Now, you couple that. You couple that with the absolute lack of getting anything 
from those trades. Okay. That too. Yeah, that too. Then you wonder why the Tigers are in the position that they're in right now. You know, yep. it oh, it drives me out of my mind. You, you you can't you can't just give away pieces. You can't trade a good, let's say good MLB third baseman for a guy that belongs in a straight jacket. Okay, you can't be doing stuff like that. That's going to hurt your franchise for years to come. And it's like, that's why we're in the position we're in. You see other guys in the majors that are having success that did play here, at least for a minute. And we just, okay, we'll make this deal. We'll trade up. We'll trade down. We'll get these prospects in here. They can't play. And the guys that you do acquire are nut jobs. Let me uh, tell you about our friends at Legacy. We got a couple more minutes. Uh, Did you know that thousands of Metro Detroiters have already called Legacy Partners to get help with their home and auto insurance? We did, and I'm telling you, guys, they saved us a lot of money. They helped us. It's easy. Get your quote because our friends at Legacy Partners are one of Southeast Michigan's top independent insurance agents. They provide a full-service, one-stop solution for all of your insurance needs, personal and business, large and small. They help our listeners by fixing mistakes that other agents have made asking the right questions to get the right coverage put in place to properly protect you. And yeah, let's face it right now, our economy, it's all about saving a little scratch. Chances are, if you haven't checked your policies in the last year, you're probably paying too much and you could be underinsured. What are you waiting for? Give legacy partners a chance to help with your home, your cars, life insurance, Medicare enrollment, or your business insurance needs. Call them today. 586-209-4106. 586-209-4106. That's 586-209-4106. Or visit LegacyPartnersINS.com to get started with your new quotes. Yes, Jason, make us absolutely uh, miserable. Can we talk about how Carlos, Carlos Pena was a tiger, then became a tiger killer? Let's just make this completely miserable. I just I, I love playing tiger killer games. You can go back and find guys that like <laughs> nobody remembers. David DeJesus. David DeJesus, go look at his number. Guy hit like 370 against Detroit and like 260 against everybody else in his career. Joe Creedy, where's Joe Creedy? That's a name. Who was who was the pitcher? Who was the pitcher for the Royals that we actually did? Um, we we did a uh, MythBusters on him. We found out he wasn't exactly a um, a Tiger killer. Gosh, because it, there was there was a time where Hang it on. Like, I, I got it. I'll tell you who was it. You see Do you this? remember? No. no, I can't, I can't see, see it. it. No, Bruce Chen. Oh, it was. Yeah, you're right. Bruce you Chen. He literally did. <laughs> I, I went back and like looked up all his his, and it was like, nah, it's yep. not that. Canerco. No, no. I mean, we could we could waste we could waste hours with Tiger. Justin Marno hit so many bombs against the no, team, dude. <laughs> there, there was listen I, to me. The there M&M was nothing. Home. There was nothing more fun than watching Leland go get Bobby C out of the bullpen to face Maurer and Morneau and immediately give up a single and a two run Homer in four pitches. <laughs> that was the Amazing. best. Dude. Amazing. Oh, we gotta go get, gotta go get the lefty to get these lefties out. Bam. Bam. Go on. We, we were at a game in 06 where, I mean, and, and this is when zoom zoom was at his, like the height of his, his powers. Yeah. And, and, Morno came up to bat with with Zamaya. He hit a ball so far into right field that was insane. It was and it was just like as good as Zomaya was in that moment, there was just something about Morno against this team. The guy just crushed against us. Yep. Crushed yep. against us. It was insane. Yeah. Well, uh, Tommy totally for sure. Different. Absolutely. Uh Tommy. Totally yep. sure. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, Merriweather, so many one hit wonders against the Tigers. Well, that, that was the bum of the month. Do you remember the whole bum of the month thing? (laughs) You just brought up some guy, even if it was a spot start and he was shutting down the tiger lineup, like like, you you just, you, you set your watch to it. You know, it was remember, you don't remember Luke Scott, do you? Oh yeah. Who can forget Luke Luke Scott? Scott. There was like a series in Baltimore and I think he hit five home runs in three games or some shit. And like, then he would come here. He would go to like... Luke Scott was a mercenary. He would play on like a new team every two years, but he terrorized the Tigers. Like his numbers against us versus anybody else, not even close. Somebody asked about Max Clark. Um, Yes. Listen, you're, you're 19 years old. I'm, I'm not going to go too hot and heavy. We're in the Mike, 
we're in the observation stage with this guy right now. I mean, when you're talking about about a guy who's 19 years old, you're legitimately, you're, you're legitimately, Blake said jar, Mike. Yeah, the swear jar. We're legitimately at a point right now where uh, there's there's no other way to say this. It is observations about this guy. And, and the observations of, about this guy, you know, right now, this is a guy with a 785 OPS, I mean, that's good. He's finding a way to get on base. Uh, six homer, 57 RBIs uh, playing down in single A. It's going to take time. That's it. It's, it's going to take one time. thing. The one dynamic that I like yeah. about Clark that we haven't seen here in freaking forever. He's got 25 stolen bases mm -hmm. already. When's the last time we had a legitimate stolen base threat on this team? It's been a long time. Even with the bases changed and, and it's easier to steal now, the pitch clock and everything like that, we don't have anybody that can swipe you 25, 30 bags. We just don't. So that part, I think, is a game changer. That part of his game is exciting to me. Everything else is gravy. But if, if he can get on base effectively and steal and continue stealing, because you, know, you had Green's injury, he's never going to be a base stealer again in his career. Okay, you got all these guys at the top of the order that aren't top of the order prototype hitters, right? You got guys leading off games that aren't speedsters on this team. Like Zach McKinstry is a utility bum, shouldn't be here. Like there's nobody here that can get a grasp on that leadoff role. And that's what you need to be a good team. And other teams do it differently. You got, you know, freaking Dabrowski putting a slow pitch softball team together with Schwarber leading off. And that's fine. That's how they're going to win games. They don't care about stealing bases. They're just there to hit bombs and mash and it works. But here in this stupid ballpark, we still haven't developed a team suited to the ballpark. It's incredible. That's and a, the ballpark's falling apart. Somebody asked, I know you'll know this, who was the Texas slugger that used the Tiger pitchers for home run derby in the one playoff series? Nelson Cruz has heard us so many. I know I had to say it. Nelson? Nelson. Nelson. <laughs> Nelson. Nelson Cruz has heard us like with so many different teams. It's incredible. I'm convinced he's he's got to be like what 45 now. I'm convinced yeah. the guy can come out and rake against us. It's oh, just, he could he walked right in and hit 30 bombs. He could walk <laughs> right in and hit 30 bombs. No question. That guy was an animal. Uh, all right. Listen, one more, and then we gotta get out of here. Let's talk about our favorite realtor. When it's time to get yourself a house, whether you're buying, you're selling, or both, you need to contact the right agent. Who am I recommending to you? Right there, Lindsay Broadwell. Your house is probably the biggest investment you'll ever make, and that's why you need a pro. Lindsay grew up here on the mean streets of Northville and has expanded her team all over Southeast Michigan. She's an expert in all facets of the business, and when it's time for you to make that call, you got to call Lindsay. Lindsay and her team will make sure you get the most out of your house and everything goes smoothly when finding your new home. Buyer, seller, First time buyer doesn't matter. Make sure you contact Lindsay at broadwellhomes.com. She'll help you with everything from start to close. Licensed realtor at Real Broker LLC. Start your search today at broadwellhomes.com. Okay, 47 and 50, Mike. They have 65 games left. I'm going to ask you to look into your crystal ball. In the last 65 games, what are you thinking? 30 and 35. I, You know what? Gosh, damn you. That's exactly where I was at. That, yeah, I, I, you threw it. 30 and 30 and 35. And, and 77 win baseball team. Hooray, hooray. <laughs> I, so well, many, I, raised well money, I thought they'd take a step up this year, and it's not going to happen. That's a very contingent question, though. There's a lot of what ifs built into that. Do they sell at the deadline? Do they stand pad? Do they unload school? I don't know. But there, there's a lot of interesting permutations that come from that question. And you know, unfortunately, we're probably going to have to wait another 17 days to find out what the direction this franchise wants to take. It's it's th this is what happens when you leave yourself in the freaking middle all the time in purgatory where you have no direction and you've got the GM coming out. Well, you know, we like the certain development of some things and we like blah, 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 blah. And it's always the party line crap that we have to hear. And I understand why I get it. But at some point, somebody's got to make a stand and say something here. And, and we need to know what's going on. The guy's been in here, you know, what, almost two full seasons now. It's time to develop a little bit more confidence with the media and start talking to people the way they need to be talked to. Let me hear the, let me hear the Dombrowski season ticket holder meeting. 
about Bobby. You try to trade him. Try to trade one him. of the yeah. greatest, one uh, of the greatest uh, comments I've ever heard. I was a lifelong Dabrowski fan from that moment on. Absolutely fantastic, ballsy. He put him out there and said, "You try to trade him," and he was right. He was freaking right. I love what Nate said. Trade Scuba for Dombrowski, and we're all good. The, the Dombrowski can... slander in this town is just gross. It's just. I don't know what planet you people live on. And yes, I dropped you people. I, I, I have no idea what planet you people live on. I just don't. And I uh, don't know what you got till it's gone. Oh my God. And and it, like you and I were talking about it on Facebook the other day, like, like honest to God, it's not like he went to two other places and has, and has had any success since he left here. Right. It's, it's absolutely infuriating, buddy. It's, it's absolutely infuriating. It drives me nuts. Um, you're, you're right. All bets are off. If, if you get rid of, the only two legitimate starters. Okay. If you One, get, if you get rid of Flaherty, it changes. But l- play a game of pretend. You get a we can't refuse this deal for Scooble. Okay. Yeah. And you get rid of Flaherty. Oh my goodness gracious. All right. We <laughs> got to get out of here. We'll see you. Thank you. <laughs> and we'll talk soon. Like a Woo! Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Todd. Thanks, Blake. We'll see you. Bye. Later. Bye. Off the air with Sean Belegian featuring. Sean Belegian and Blake Matrizak. Produced by Todd Losey and Blake Matrizak. Executive produced by Sean Belegian and Todd Losey. Theme song, incidental music, and related sound effects are from Play It Loud by Jam Studio. Engineering, mixing, and graphic design support provided by the unsyndicated podcast team. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Off the Air with Sean Belegian on all your favorite channels. While you're there, be sure to rate and review the podcast. Got something to say to Sean? Call the unsyndicated hotline at 248-237-3257.